Hello and welcome back. And in this video, we are going to be coding our view controller for general detail. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to create a new file, Google Touch Class UI Table View Controller this time, and we're going to call this one uh, Journal Table View Controller. Okay, and reason um, we chose we chose basically a table view controller. Uh, to be shown here um, is because when you have your um, keyboard open up at that time your view automatically is gonna shift up uh, that's the uh, benefit that actually table view gives you static table view so most of the time uh, you would notice that like you know when you're designing an app and you need like you know a form kind of layout it's better off uh, with um, using a static uh, table view uh, versus like you know putting a uh, scroll view and like you know messing with the scroll view it gets a little bit complicated and this one is a, actually an easier approach uh, so that's why I want to give you this approach um, there's nothing wrong with scroll view scroll view is great uh, but this approach is a lot more simpler and straightforward than that one that's why I chose this one okay cool so let's let's go ahead and give this uh, table view a class general table view controller okay and now we're gonna go uh, to that table view controller all right so general detail table view controller okay cool so what we're gonna do is um, first thing we are going to make sure that we have firebase imported there we go okay I'm gonna uncomment or remove all these other things number of sections we don't need we need number of rows and they are two so we're gonna include that and we're gonna remove all this other extra junk that's being posted here okay so all right now what we can do now because this is a static uh, table view right um, we can do like you know we can connect our um, our controls directly here okay so that's what we will be uh, doing here our outlets are going to be directly at the at this table view level you know we don't need a another uh, table view cell or a couple of table view cells okay so I'm gonna create IV outlet week var journal title UI text field IP outlet week bar general detail and save button Now in our view did load, uh, we need a couple of more uh, variables. So first is journal. This is going to be a journal entry and it's going to be optional. So this is going to be our check of whether we are creating a new journal or we are showing an existing uh, journal entry. Okay. So, uh, so we're going to create an optional variable and we're going to say db fire store like so. Okay. Now, one thing we can check is if journal is not equal to nil. In that case, we already have we are viewing a journal detail, so we can say self dot uh, journal title dot is enabled is equal to false self dot journal detail is editable is false save button does is enabled is false okay and uh, dot dot text is equal to journal dot title
um, entry. There we go. Okay. So we're going to see the detail. We're going to populate that and make those fields disable. All right. When user is going to save, uh, tap on save button, uh, we're going to actually, um, we're going to act upon that as well. So we're going to simply save at IB outlet or IB action, actually. Punk did tap save under UI bar button item and uh, we're gonna take our add entry here and I'm gonna cut it and move it inside this right here so we simply gonna say self dot add entry and uh, here our add entry is going to be a little bit different, so it's going to expect title and entry. These two values, so let's do self dot add entry. Title is going to be our self dot journal title dot text and self dot journal detail dot text unwrapped okay and then we're gonna simply say self dot navigation controller dot pop to pop view controller animated true so basically this is going to uh, save it and close that detail view controller and push it back push us back uh, to that uh, same uh, detail view or list view controller where we have all the journals listed Okay, so uh, now what we need to do is we have our, we have added our journal. Uh, we want to make sure that during the entry we are using what what's been provided, not our dummy data. So entry, and let's see what the issue is. Okay, and. Uh, Okay, build succeeded, everything is looking good. So let's go ahead and uh, go to our view controller. And what we need basically a uh, button. So um, here we are adding like a floating button. So let's add a floating button here. Um, okay, so let me show you how you can add a floating button completely programmatically. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're simply gonna create a lazy variable here. Lazy var add journal UI button, and we're gonna say let button b is equal to UI button return b. Okay, b dot translate because because we wanna provide our own constraints. B dot um, set image so we want to actually set an image so let me use image for icon and while we are doing that uh, let's bring out other other icons as well so I'm gonna actually open our assets and uh, include face ID include plus icon and include touch ID okay so and we want to make sure that all three are rendered as template images okay once we have done that we are simply going to go back and we're going to say image Literal, and we're gonna select our image here. So plus, and state is normal. There we go. Awesome. So uh, we're gonna set a few more things here. We're gonna say b dot tint color is going to be UI color dot white background color. 
little little pick maybe this color right here All right, so let's give it a very light color and the dot image edge inset is equal to UI edge insets with 10, 10, 10, and 10. So our image is uh, uh, image uh, and the boundary or, or the uh, frame has uh, about 10 points of spacing between left, right, and top and bottom. Okay. That's why we have like image inset or image ed edge inset or gonna add target self and we're gonna create a function for selector so at obj c punk did tap new journal sender UI button We're simply gonna have that selector here. Tap. Okay, for dot touch up inside. Okay, so with that, uh, we are done with button creation. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna add this button and uh, we're gonna constrain it. So self dot view dot add sub view. And we're gonna add add journal button and ns layout constraint dot activate and this takes an array of constraints so we're gonna say add journal dot bottom anchor dot constraint is equal to self dot view dot bottom anchor negative twenty or negative ten add general dot trailing anchor dot constraint is equal to self dot view dot trailing anchor and constraint is negative 10 and then add general dot width anchor dot constraint equal to constant and we're gonna use 50 add general dot height dot constraint is equal to 50 as well okay so that should add uh, a button to our view so let's go ahead and run this real quick and see what we get okay so demo at demo.com password login okay all right so we have our button here and uh, what we're gonna do is uh, using this button we're gonna navigate to to this um, new screen all right so we're simply gonna say perform segue with identifier. I think we called it details. Send self. Let's make sure. Yeah, details. Okay, so let's go back. Call it details. Okay. All right. Now we need to put prepare for prepare for segue. Pre prepare for segue. And what we want to do in prepare for segue is we want to check if segue dot identifier is equal to 
details and center. So um, I guess one thing we want to make sure is uh, when we are creating new, what we can do is um, we can send nil as sender because that's going to be the indicator that we have tapped a new because when user taps on this record that that's when we want to send our user to the same screen so we want we need a distinguisher between if the compose button this button is sending the user or if it is the uh, if it is the tap on the record is sending the user so for that reason we're gonna say if sender is equals equal equal nil in that case we are is not equal nil sorry it's not equal nil okay in that case we want to set our segue journal entry so let me finish this and I'm gonna talk about it Before we talk about this, let me put a did select. That's all. So you know what is going on. So let's go down here. Okay. Did select. So when you select a row, uh, when you select a table row, we want to show a record as well. So we're going to say that um, journal is equal to self dot journals index path dot row. We're gonna get a general here, and we sim can simply say table view dot deselect row at index path first, animated true, and then we're gonna say self dot perform segue with identifier details, and sender is going to be journal. So we're gonna use sender a parameter uh, to basically send this journal that was selected um, by the user right here. So we're gonna go back in our perform segue, prepare segue, and we're gonna say if sender is not nil, that means user has tabbed here somewhere. So we're gonna set our destination, uh, segue's destination view controller, uh, general view controller's general property <laughs> to be basically the sender, as, as sender. So this sender is going to be this general value that we have set. So hopefully that is clear. You're gonna see like, you know, and it's, it's gonna become more clear when you're gonna see it in action. Anyways, um, so let's go ahead and, and run this. I wanna, I wanna try it out. So one more thing actually, I think we should move it to 20 points because it's too much close to, uh, close to the bottom. Now, what we're going to do is gonna say demo at demo.com password. Okay, so if we click new here, um, we get a we get new journal entry, and if we select a record, then we get an error. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, why is that error? Oh, because we forgot to we forgot to connect our uh, outlets. Okay, so let me go ahead and connect our outlets. Okay, I'm gonna rerun this. that all this junk is gone as well. So let's go ahead and rerun. Okay, demo at 
demo.com password there we go if we select we see the sample everything is disabled and we, when we click new we get this new journal so we're gonna type new journal here save and we think we have an error so oh save is not connected <laughs> okay that was my bad so let me connect save as well did tap save there we go okay so let's rerun it Let's create a new entry. Alright, save that. And we have an error. Okay, so let's see what the error is. Um, okay, so AP database is never initialized. Yes forgot to initialize database so when we when we save this uh, we should actually initialize our database because we copied that from the other file where we had database initialized so that's why it crashed but it's good we are debugging and uh, we are learning about how to debug our own app. Log in. Let's try one more time. Okay. Save it. And there we go. Our new entry is showing up right there. All right. Cool. So we have our um, app uh, that can actually handle uh, not only creating a new journal, yeah, but also uh, displaying all the journal entries. And if you go back to Firebase right now, you're going to see a couple of records making up there. Okay, so uh, one uh, small thing that I, that I wanted to add uh, here before we call this video done is basically when we... When we add this um, this snapshot right uh, we should put a where condition here so we want to actually only show user their created journals so we want to say where field where field and we want to say field is user ID so user ID and it is equal to user ID that we have this way it's going to basically filter out and retrieve only records that are re uh, related to this particular user okay so with that uh, we can actually try to rerun and everything should work as is but when new user is created they're not gonna see um, other users entries All right, so let's go ahead and rerun this and we're gonna enter demo at demo.com password login And there we go. Everything is working as is. So that's it. Um, I think uh, this is a good stopping point for this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this video. And uh, in the next video, we're going to start talking about uh, Keychain uh, and uh, going to store our credentials inside Keychain. Okay. So thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.